You know, I've preached a lot in previous videos about filling out your case with as many fans as possible. The problem is, fans are one of those things that tend to be getting more and more expensive as time goes on. Bearings are getting more complicated, they're adding all kinds of RGB control to them, they're PWM, and then even the cage designs are driving the prices up. In fact, right now you could spend as much as like $45 on a single fan. But if you're a utilitarian and you're going, I don't care about all that crap, I just wanna move and exchange the air in my case as nicely as possible and max out my case fans, that way I can have the best cooling possible. So I was perusing on Amazon and I found a five pack of fans. But here's the catch. They only cost $3.99 a piece when you, when you break it down. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna break it down right after this ad. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption about new stuff from iFixit. We should even grab this card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Mino. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Uh, this, you know, when I'm bored, I do spend a lot of time looking around Amazon for PC parts that are inexpensive. Because I, what I have this idea of doing is eventually building an entire computer system, like case, fans, power supply, all that stuff, out of maybe lesser known brands of, you know, but they're, but they're quality. The difference about these fans is this is not a, an unknown brand. These are actually Antec fans. Antec has been around a long time. Maybe they haven't stayed quite as in front of the, you know, in front of people's faces. I don't know how really to word it. Maybe they haven't been as good about staying in the limelight in terms of advertising, but Antec has been around for a long time, both with power supplies, with cases, with coolers. And it's one of those things where I feel like maybe over time they just kind of became a lesser known brand amongst people, but they are no they are not some cheap knockoff. And that's what really caught my attention with this. Now on Amazon, at the time of making this video, these are non-RGB fans, these are DC fans, which means they're a three pin. But that should not, there is a bad misconception out there that if it's a three pin fan, it sucks. And that's not true. Four pin fans with PWM, you know, people are like, oh, you can control those off CPU load. Absolutely, yes, yes you can. But I will be making a video talking about setting up your case for proper cooling. And we're gonna talk about DC fans because every modern motherboard can actually control the speed of a, of a fan by setting up a fan curve, even with a three pin DC fan header. They, all fan headers today work with both PWM and three pin fans, depending on you know the brand and, and the amount of control that you get. Separate video coming with that, but these are a three pin fan. In terms of specs, these are the Antec F12 fans, are 120 millimeter, LED type, none. That should make a lot of people happy. The only thing folks may not like about these fans is the fact that, let's go and open it up, well, as you can see right there, they are a white blade. But I feel like if you're sh if you're a utilitarian and you're one of those people that are like, I don't care about the aesthetics, I just want the performance and I want the cooling, this shouldn't bother you. In fact, the nice thing about a white blade is it's gonna work with any build and it will just match any build. The only thing it may not is the yellow Antec logo. logo. Guess what? You can easily put a sticker over that or just get a circle punch. I've done this before. Ordered a cheap carbon fiber wrap fake thing off Amazon, fake carbon fiber 3M sticky thing. Got a, a circular hole punch cutter thing from like Joann's Crafts or whatever, and then punch those out and put them on my fans. And those, those lived on Skunk Works for many years and it was cheap. But anyway, they're only 1000 RPM fans. But here's the thing, 1000 RPM is gonna mean a few things. They, it's gonna stay quiet, but if you have five of these in your system, you're gonna be moving a crap ton of CFM, which means they're gonna be quiet, but they're still gonna be moving air. And I would much rather have a $4 1000 RPM fan filling a slot in a case that didn't break the bank than having no fan there at all. So you gotta look at it that way. In terms of noise level, 21.5 dBA. You're not gonna hear them and that's because of the fact that they're 1000 RPM. However, they still move 30.5 CFM. Now that is measured in open airflow, which means I've got, a, and this is just like a height 360 fan right here out of their case so I wanna kinda compare it with. That measurement means there's no obstructions on either side of the fan. It is just free flowing. So 30.5 CFM, not terrible. Um, and they only pull 1.5 or 0.15 amps. You could put all five of these on a single header on your motherboard and you'd be fine because most headers are rated up to two amps these days. So you'd wanna check with your motherboard anyway. Five year warranty, how much effort you're gonna go through to ship back fans. It would probably cost you more in shipping to ship it somewhere than to just buy new ones. 
but they are a regular price of $24.99. Or $24 right now they're on sale for $19.99. I'll put the link down below. The problem is as soon as I do that, they're gone. I'm sure they're gone already by the time you guys have got to this point because people have already gone and bought them. But even at $5 a fan, that'd still be a, a, a bargain. Because if you go on Amazon right now and you shop for cheap fans, you'll find four or $5 fans that are terrible. I mean, they're like Molex plugs and they're just some brand you've never even heard of. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, the initial feel of these fans does not scream quality. It doesn't scream quality, it just screams, it's, it's a fan. That's all, that's really all there is to it. But like I said, I am all about, in this particular concept here, saving money and getting the most for your money. And you put all five of these fans in a case and it costs you less than ordering one lunch off of like DoorDash, then there you go. That's, that's worth talking about. We've got a, a Molex to three fan splitter. Okay, maybe that ages this a little bit, but anyway. <laughs> We've got two of them. You know what? This is actually useful. We will keep this. <laughs> um, comes with the fan screws needed to mount it you know, to your case and stuff. They are the uh, self-tapping variety of fan screws. And uh, anyway, moving on, let's go ahead now and talk about the bearing type. It doesn't actually say it anywhere on here what the bearing type is, but it does on the ad. And this is where some people are probably gonna be like, oh man, remember $3.99.8 per fan. If you get a year, maybe two out of them, out of that five year warranty, that's worth it in my opinion because you could easily spend more than that $19 on a single fan from any other brand. It is a hydro bearing. So that means it's actually a fluid bearing. And the only downside about fluid bearings, even though it's lower noise, high performance, is the fact that they become susceptible to dust. Now they are sealed. However, as you know, dust can make its way anywhere. It's like, it's like Jurassic Park, you know, life finds a way. Well, dust finds a way too. And it will eventually gum up your bearing and you will get the, you know, rattling around because it will just turn your bearing from nice oily fluid into a thick gunky mess over time. And if you live in a very dirty, dusty environment, it's gonna happen even quicker. That is a downside and that's true for any type of fan. Corsair brings gaming to the next level with the Xenion 45 inch flexible OLED Xenion Flex display. With up to 240 hertz refresh rate, 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, motion blur canceling, anti-reflective coating, burn-in protection, and customizable bend based on user's preference, the Xenion Flex from Corsair allows gamers to truly tailor their display to their liking. Click the link below for more details. One of my biggest issues with fans these days is the cable links are far too short. These, eh, if I had to guess, this is probably gonna be a foot and a half, maybe. So that'd be eight, what, 18 inches converted into whatever these CMs are. Um, not long, but not short. If you add the length of that extension cable it came with with the Molex splitter, then, you know, it'd be a little bit longer. Now the downside about using a Molex splitter versus using some sort of a three pin splitter off your motherboard is you won't be able to control the speed. So keep that in mind. What I have here, this is my 12 volt power supply. So I can test this at a couple of different RPMs and such. For instance, I can test it at five volt, I can test it at seven volt and 12 volt, which are the most common types. So as you can see right now, the blade's a little wobbly. You can kind of see right there, we'll check each one. The blade is slightly wobbly, and that's probably just because of the quality of the plastic, of, of the, the build itself. I don't think it's wobbling on the bearing. The hub doesn't look like it's wobbling. The sticker is also very not centered, so that might end up triggering you. That wobble over time though could lead to those gaps forming in the bearing seal, which will allow dust to eventually make its way in there. Right now, at five volts, the blades are barely turning. However, with no resistance, I can feel some airflow. And I'm gonna pull out my airflow meter. As I showed in the past, this thing is Airflow meters have to be calculated to duck size. So I didn't do the actual calculation perfectly because it's a very cone shape, which makes it a little bit more complicated. And this is a pressure fit piece that we made and it really, it's hard to get in there, especially since it's a little colder today and I think it might have shrunk. So this number right now is 
not to be like taken as this is the actual CFM of the fan. It's more of a comparison thing. Like a, it's like a dyno run on a for a car. You know, each dyno is going to measure differently. You have to compare before and after kind of a thing. Five volts with these fans, blades barely turning as you saw. We are getting 20 CFM, 20.21. It's actually not bad. Hey, that set, that crunching sound you hear is actually the the fan meter, not the blade itself. If you had five of these in your case, running at this speed, you wouldn't be able to hear a dang thing. Now, once it has to pull through filters and mesh grills and all that sort of stuff, it's gonna get worse. In fact, check this out. If I were to attach it to this radiator right now, and I should be screwing this down for proper test, but I'm not. 11, I'll be honest, that's higher than I expected it to be. And this is where push-pull really comes in handy too, because it helps overcome that pressure drop across the rad. And this is like stuff I wanna start doing as we do fan testing now. I know this is not as scientific as sticking it into a you know $50,000 fan testing chamber, but this is, in my opinion, real world enough for you guys to have some data to be able to go off of. Let's go ahead now and crank this up to seven volts. And what I'm kind of mimicking here is uh, using the fan curve optimizer in your motherboard to start controlling headers. So now we'll add a little bit more. There's seven volts. You can see now, remember, I'm not measuring the actual CFM of the fan, I'm measuring the difference so we can compare how much, you can see visually with numbers how much more airflow there actually is. However, it's still, I'm pointing this at my mic. I mean, can you see the mic in the frame, Phil? It's like right there. Yeah. Can you hear it? So that it's, it's moving a fair amount of air through. This is a Hardware Labs ra radiator. Radi I almost said radiator. You can tell what channel I've been watching when I say radiator, but anyway. Look at that, 20 to 21 CFM. So by going from five volts to seven volts, we've now got the same amount of airflow through a rad that we were getting with it just open at five volts. So already I'm pretty impressed. The blade design, it's kind of a hybrid in that it's got the static pressure the way you get a high static pressure fan is you have to have the fan blades have minimal gap between the blades themselves. You can see that they don't overlap. There's a small gap there. And what's weird is like having a bigger gap gets you more airflow, but less static pressure. Because of that gap, any resistance the air can actually backflow through that gap. But this is sort of an in-betweener. So it's got more of a sickle or a scythe. Reminds me of like a gentle typhoon sort of a blade almost, but like wider, which gives us a very good amount of airflow. So at seven volts, yeah, it it's moves lots of air through this rad, so I would be like, sure, use these fans on a radiator, no problem. In fact, these remind me now of like, back in the day when I first started my YouTube channel, one of the fans that everyone was just all raving about was the um, Yate Loon fans. They were like $4 and they performed really well. The problem was they were, they had a cheap, ugly frame similar to this, and then they had like a red and yellow and black cable that wasn't sleeved, and it was a three pin, and it was ugly, but it worked. All right, we're going to 12 volts now. So that's what the blade wobble looks like at speed. It's a little bit less noticeable, but it's definitely there. Now you can sort of hear the motor hum. It's gentle. It's not, a, doesn't like intrude a whole lot. Now we sh we're gonna see a lot of CFM. Obviously this is much, much higher than the advertised 30.5. So with this calculated, the uh, math calculation that's inputted into the meter, we're seeing a 55.6, 55.2, 54.8. So now we want to see is how much pressure drop is there across the rad. See, with the higher RPM, it overcomes the, the pressure drop quite a bit better. As you can see right now, it is not uh, half, it's more than half. Whereas at five volt, we saw it drop down to half. This is a 34 versus 55, so that's probably about what, 75% or so of the uh, flow without the rad. And again, this is a this is a high FPI rad, fins per inch. This is this is not an easy rad to blow air through. Sure, it's only a 30 mil thick, but it is dense. So then in terms of the noise going through the radiator, it's not creating a weird turbulent sound. I would have liked to have seen these fans be 1200 RPM to be honest, the little extra RPM would help. But if you get a ton of these, you know, in your system, you add these five, let's say two in the back, one in the top, one in the rear, three in the front, depending on your case, this would keep any system cool. The question is gonna be the longevity of the bearing itself. All right, there's one other thing I want to do right now, and that is going to be compare it to this Hype Y60 fan. I don't know if this is a fair test or not, Cage-wise, it feels like a better quality built fan. 
it's a more airflow optimized fan than it is static pressure. Um, and this is one of the fans that comes with, like I said, the Height Y60. I just needed to give some sort of like, here's a cheap fan, not necessarily that cheap. In fact, I'm gonna look it up and see if Height sells this fan individually, cause I wanna see. So to put it in perspective, it, it's like an identical looking fan, but a three pack costs 25 bucks. So that makes this fan significantly more expensive individually than those fans. Um, this is a 1500 RPM fan. The difference is this is a three pin and the FA is a four pin. So it's a PWM fan. So that's really the only difference there. 1500 RPM, it's also a fluid bearing. So very comparable actually. So I mean, obviously with it being an airflow optimized fan, it's showing 85 on our meter. I think we're just gonna have to call this J units cause obviously this is not calculated to proper CFM. JFM. JFM, J fan measurement. This is kind of a good demonstration of a fan blade that is designed for static pressure versus one designed for airflow. This chopped itself in less than half, but you notice the Antec fan did not. And that's because if we look at the blade design, this is an airflow blade. You can see there's a much bigger gap between the blades, but there's more blades. So this is designed to move as much air as possible with less resistance. Um, I think I need, it's time to do an updated video about airflow fans. There's one more thing I want to do right now, and I want to see what happens when I push more voltage to this. <laughs> this, this power supply will allow me to push 15 volts to it. And I have a feeling it's not going to take it well. And I don't want to burn one up, but you know what? For four bucks, 15.2, 90, 91, it's not slowing down. We've done this with other fans where we would set it to 15 volts and you hear the bearing go, the fan would go and start slowing down. Why do I feel like this fan is capable of more than what they set it to? 30 volts. No, the fact that at 15 volts, it's not slowing down. I gotta tell you right now, for 19 bucks, if I were on a budget, but I needed more fans in my system, especially with summer months, you know, they're gonna be here before you know it. I would absolutely not think twice about using these fans. Like it'd, it'd be a no brainer for 19.99, even at 24.99, honestly. Let's move it a ton here. No, that's just taking the 15 volts, no problem. What, can you remember what fan it was when it was like, oh, when it was all slowing like down? Corsair or something. Yeah, it's gonna break 100. Yeah, 106, 108 J units, 109, 110, 110 J fan meters. All right, there we go. Just a fun video here, kind of showing you guys, uh, one, a reason to play with my power supply, and two, you don't have to break the budget when it comes to putting fans into your system. 20 bucks for five of these guys. Throw them in your system. Have plenty of airflow, keep your stuff cool, and uh, you, don't, you don't have to spend 20 bucks a fan. Brands would like you to believe you have to, but you don't. I'll put the link to these down below. Good luck if you've waited this long in the video to buy some and you desperately need some fans, you didn't have a lot of money and you waited to this long, they're probably gone already. Or the brand goes, hey, these are, these are selling like crazy. Let's reduce the sale and increase the price. Don't wait. Brands do that to us all the time and it pisses me off. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.